What's up everyone, Chris here, back again with another video uh, in our keto diet exploration series. Today I wanna talk about how uh, a keto diet or ketogenic diet, which is basically defined as a diet with little to no carbohydrate, uh, how that's gonna specifically affect your thyroid levels and your, your thyroid health. It's a really interesting topic and I've got some cool studies to show you today that are going to uh, back up what I'm saying. So by the end of this video, you're actually gonna have a, a solid understanding of whether the keto diet is good for people who specifically either want a faster metabolism or for people who have problems with hypothyroidism already. This video is one of several in-depth videos on my keto diet exploration series, uh, taking a look into the many facets of the now very popular ketogenic diet and how it affects different hormones and general health in the human body. And if you're interested in watching the other videos, subscribe to this channel and check out the keto diet exploration playlist. Let's get started. So first off, so we have everybody on the same page, I wanna make sure that you understand what the thyroid gland really is. We all have one, but some of us have healthier ones than others. The thyroid is one of the most critical hormone producing glands in the human body. An out of whack thyroid can be an absolute nightmare for someone seeking better health and a faster metabolism. The thyroid's hormones regulate vital body functions, including breathing, heart rate, central and peripheral nervous systems, body weight, muscle strength, menstrual cycles in women, body temperature, cholesterol levels, and much more. Now the thyroid gland is actually about two inches long and lies in the front of your throat below the prominence of thyroid cartilage, sometimes called the Adam's apple. The thyroid has two sides called lobes that lie on either side of your windpipe and it's usually connected by a strip of thyroid tissue known as an isthmus. Some people do not have an isthmus and instead have two separate thyroid lobes. Now let's take a look at how the thyroid gland works. Thyroid is part of the endocrine system, which is made up of glands that produce, store, and release hormones into the bloodstream so the hormones can reach the body's cells. The thyroid gland uses iodine from the foods that you eat to make two main hormones, T3 and T4. Now both of these hormones are extremely important to have balanced, but if you wanna have a healthy metabolism, you especially wanna increase the amount of T3 conversion. Now, hypothyroidism, or low functioning thyroid, which is characterized by a slow metabolism, is also characterized by less than normal amounts of T3 production. Increasing T3 will help to solve the hypothyroidism. So where do carbohydrates fit into all of this? Thyroid hormones are essential to maintain and regulate carbohydrate and energy metabolism. Now, conversely, the energy or glucose that we get from carbs is required to fuel the production of thyroid hormones. This is because parts of the brain ultimately responsible for thyroid hormone regulation, the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland, require glucose to function. In fact, the main regulation hormone, TSH or thyroid stimulating hormone, is partly made up of glucose molecules. In addition to these important roles, carb intake appears to influence the amount of T3 that gets converted to T4 thyroid hormone. And this is important for hypothyroidism as T3 is the active thyroid hormone that you need to increase. It appears that when carb intake is drastically reduced, conversion of T3 to T4 declines. And this could be explained by the possible interaction between insulin and the enzymes that convert T4 into T3. So to sum it up nicely, thyroid hormones rely on glucose for the production and the conversion, specifically of uh, T3 from the T4. Now let's talk about survival mechanisms. The body is naturally going to downregulate metabolism through this pathway when it goes into a survival mode physiologically. For example, extreme prolonged calorie restriction, long water fasts, those will both cause the body to slow metabolic function, shuttling resources toward vital organs. The ketogenic diet was originally designed for therapeutic reasons in epileptic patients with the intention of mimicking fasting on a physiological level. Now, I'm gonna do another video on the differences between the two later in the series, the differences between fasting and the keto diet. However, one of the key differences between fasting and the keto diet is that water fasts are typically only done for short, acute periods of time. 
for example, one to three days, or in very extreme cases, up to 30 days for people that are healing their bodies of cancer or autoimmune diseases. And water fasts are typically used as a means of healing and rejuvenation since the body does not need to focus any energy on digestion and can focus on complete systemic rest. The keto diet, on the other hand, since people are consuming and digesting calories, puts people into this physiological state for months to years at a time, therefore putting the body under a significant amount of physiological stress. One of the manifestations of this long-term stress response is a drastic slowing of thyroid and therefore metabolic functioning. T3 conversion slows down significantly. A number of small-scale studies have shown that after a period of starvation, refeeding with carbohydrates but not with protein or fats normalize thyroid levels. Now in one of these studies, researchers evaluated the effects of restricting carbs at various levels at 85, 44, and 2% of energy intake on thyroid hormones in healthy male participants. Results found that the high carbohydrate diet had no impact, whereas the very low carbohydrate diet did. It caused decreased T3 levels and increased RT3 levels and free T4 levels. Now this graph right here shows the average T3 plasma concentrations after 11 days of high carbohydrate diet in white, a control diet in gray, and low carbohydrate diet in black in the healthy males. The star indicates a significantly lower T3 level for the low carbohydrate diet, which is not desirable in hypothyroidism. These results are similar to those of another study where participants either fasted or received an 800 calorie low calorie diet comprised of either a 0% 25% or 100% carbohydrate for a period of two weeks. The results showed that T3 levels were reduced from both the fasting and the zero carbohydrate diet, but not from the 100% carbohydrate diet. Now let's look at the conclusion here. It would seem that from a systemic view of the endocrinology and the biochemistry at play here, that the ketogenic diet downregulates thyroid functioning across the board. This is due to the decrease in TSH production through the hypothalamic pituitary axis as well as decreased conversion of T3 from T4 thyroid hormone, which can either make hypothyroidism worse or cause it in a formerly healthy person. Now hopefully this is helpful information for anybody who's considering jumping into the keto diet craze at this point. Uh, because it has become very popular. Hopefully this is educational to you and, and uh, can help you, you know, make a decision if you're on the fence about it right now. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel. And if you wanna check out more videos uh, on the keto diet exploration with, with regards to specific topics, go check out my playlist. It's called Keto Diet Exploration. I'll see you on the next video.